Today I'm going to show you how to rebuild the carburetor on your John Deere two-cylinder tractor. Behind me is a John Deere B, but these techniques will apply whether you're working on a D, A, B, G, or even a little H John Deere tractor. Now you need to take the carburetor off of your tractor, so be sure to turn the fuel off first up here at the dash, and then you can remove your fuel line. You want to be careful when you take your fuel line off. This fitting can be um, a little bit of a problem, so just make sure that you're moving the bolt and that the line stays straight. Then you'll take off your choke and your throttle cables. There's a small pin and then the uh, line will pull out. Lastly, there's just some bolts here at the front and the back and then your carburetor will come right off. Here's a quick tip. If you use a half inch wrench on the fitting that's closest to the carb, that'll hold the fitting still and then you can use your bigger wrench to take the uh, fuel line completely off. I have all of my other fittings off, and this bolt here is just about ready to come off. I already have the bolt from the other side, so that will come out. My fuel line's loose, and I can wiggle it. There we go. Dripping a little bit of gas, but not bad. There we go. On the bottom of the carburetor, you can take your bowl nut out. Mine was really loose, and I'm able to take it off with a wrench, and now my fingers. That's not always the case, though. These will be either brass or steel, and sometimes they'll really be stuck. So instead of getting too rough with your wrench, you can uh, use a little bit of heat. Make sure that your carburetor is fully drained, that you don't have gas in there. And then you can use a little bit of heat and get that nut off of there. Obviously, I got a little bit of gas coming out of mine. You can see their float there in the bottom as well. Here we can take the strainer screen assembly apart and we'll get this off. Underneath there, there will be a gasket and you can inspect that. Lots of times those are needing to be replaced. Underneath here is the needle and seat. We can take the seat off here with a deep socket. And once it's loose, you can go the rest of the way with your fingers. The needle itself will stay in there for right now. We'll just take the seat out. And then the next step will be to take these screws out. I'll show you a, different, a couple different techniques. One technique for getting this screw out is to put your screwdriver in here and then beat it with a hammer to kind of loosen up the threads like so. And then it will still be tight enough that you probably won't be able to uh, move it. So you can take a crescent wrench and put it on your screwdriver here and that will give you some extra leverage on your screwdriver so that you can turn that like there. And then you can take your screw out. Additionally, another option might be to use an impact screwdriver like this, which is made to be uh, pounded on with a hammer. If that doesn't work and you do have access to a torch, you could use that as well and heat up that screw a little bit in order to get it off. Now that you have your float bearings out, the float will come out. You can take this pin out of the bottom. You might have to use a small punch if it's stuck in there. And then the float will lift right out. Looks like I'm stuck on my needle. There we go. Okay, so there's my float. My needle is still in there and get that out like so. Lastly, you can take your fuel inlet out right here. This is just use a half inch wrench to turn that out. You can take both of these screws out if you desire, but you don't have to. The fuel inlet would be good to take out though, just so that you can make sure that it's clean. Now we're ready to disassemble the upper portion of the carburetor. This is the choke side and you can take these screws out. There's two of them. Throughout the carburetor here, these screws might be really tight. This one obviously has been apart somewhat recently because it's coming apart very easily for us, although it still doesn't run right on the tractor. So we got both of those screws out. Then I'm going to turn this to the side. Then I can take a pair of pliers and just pull that right out. Get a good grip on it. Here we go. So I got the plate out. Then on the side here, We'll just use a small wrench. I think it was 3 8 if I remember correctly. Yeah. And we'll take that out. There's that little spring underneath it. And then the plate comes out just like that. We'll move all these parts aside and flip over to the throttle side and follow those same similar steps. And turn this throttle door towards us and remove both of those screws. Once I get it loose, it's easier with my finger. These do have a small little washer behind them. Which one? Then I'll turn it up and with a pair of pliers I'll pull that right out. This one's a little bit tighter. You get a better grip on it. Try 
try to wiggle it here this way. It wants to come out the side. Pull it this way and give it a good tug. There we go. Okay. Got that out. This comes out. Up here, your high and low needles can come right out. Let's just unscrew. These unscrew pretty easily. Probably the easiest screws on the whole carburetor to move out. Okay. Now, on a John Deere, it's really important that you use a screwdriver to take these uh, jets out to so you can adequately clean the passageways. I think that a lot of people might be tempted when they're rebuilding a carburetor to just buy a really basic kit, install those parts, and call it good. But if you want your tractor to run right, then this step is really crucial. You have to get it clean and clear those passageways. Sometimes these screws can be really hard to get out. You can use heat if you need to. Um, another trick would be to use a small pair of locking pliers and you can lock on to the screw and then move it out if you need to. Um, but you gotta stick with it and get these out. It's absolutely critical to the rebuild process. Get that one out. There's one down here that you can take out. There's another one right here. And then lastly, one up here. Don't forget about your economizer valve that's on the side here. This will just screw out, or you can use locking pliers or heat if needed. Properly cleaning your carburetor is absolutely essential to your success. You can use a number 40 drill bit through your top passageway here and drill all the way down. Lots of times you'll have to shove your uh, drill into that passageway. It'll be so incredibly clogged, but you want to clean it out all the way to your idle right here. You can also clean out the bottom, but normally the top one is more plugged than the bottom passageway. Once you do that, you can use the same drill bit right here on your idle, again, to clean through here all the way down. Again, mine was really clean to start with, but yours will not be as clean. And it's absolutely critical for you to get these passageways clean for your rebuild to be successful. Next, we'll clean this idle path, which goes all the way down to the uh, idle needle. It's absolutely essential that you use the right size drill bit. This is a number 53 drill bit, which is a 59,000 size. You have to have the right size drill bit in order to do this. And you absolutely need to clean out this passageway here for your idle. I'm on the throttle side of the carburetor and there's two orifices here. This orifice you'll clean out from the top on an angle. And then the second orifice you'll clean out from the bottom right here. You can see there's that second hole. This is an all fuel carburetor. If you have a carburetor that is for gas only, it's a slightly different. You can see that there's four smaller orifices, which you'll access two from one hole. And then there's a hole beside it, which you'll access the other two orifices. This is a number 57 drill bit, which is 43 thousandths. And it's really important that you have the right size drill bit. Normally, these will get plugged up due to rust, not to a gas problem or anything like that. So just soaking the carburetor won't work. You need to be sure to drill them out. Next, we'll take their throttle shaft bushing out. There's a small felt, which you can see there. That should come out pretty easily for you. And then you can just use a punch and place that on the edge of your bushing and drive it out. It's moving. And I'll... it's going got to be getting close look yeah it's real close there it's out and I'll show you what the new one looks like here you can just drive that in and then put the felt uh, on after it to disassemble the throttle shaft you'll need to take this screw out on the side it's threaded first and then the pin runs through the shaft so you take those threads out and then it will pull out I have my vise here ready so that I can just drop this down into the vise. And the vise isn't clamping on it, it's just resting on it to hold it there. Then you can use a small punch like this one to punch that shaft through, like so. That came out really easily. If you break your uh, linkage here, this assembly at all, this comes as a new replacement part that you can purchase from us and uh, you could replace it that way. Before we begin putting new parts into the carburetor, I want to talk to you about ordering parts to make sure that you get the right ones. 
First, you absolutely need to read the number on the side of your carburetor. Your carburetor will say DLTX and then a number. That number is crucial because the kits are different depending on what model carburetor you have. So go ahead and read that number and then you can order your parts. Most of the time you'll find that number on the side of the carburetor. In really rare cases, you'll see it on the top. So if it's not on the side, look on the top. But most of the time it will be right on the side there for you like my carburetor. Now, once you know the number for your carburetor, then you need to select what carburetor kit you want to purchase. This one right here is the economy kit. You just get new gaskets and a new needle and seat. Really, really simple kit. Your next jump up is this basic kit. Again, it has the gaskets and the needle and seat that you saw in the economy kit, but this time it has new bushings here, which are important to replace. Those do wear out as well as your new throttle shaft and new screws and washers. If you want to get really involved in your process, then you'd purchase this comprehensive kit, which has all the parts you saw in the previous kits, as well as a ton more. We have a new spring here. We got the new bushings. These are two new bearings for your um, float pin. Then we have the new uh, drain plug. We've got the bowl nut here. Uh, this is your economizer screw. New idle and main needles. These are new screws for uh, all of your passageways, which we'll take apart and clean. This screw goes in your throttle assembly or your throttle linkage here. A new screen, these get really gummed up and it's really important to replace those. Um, just lots of parts here that are involved in your comprehensive kit. We'll show you how to put these parts in on the video. And if you want to do a really thorough job on your carburetor, you'll purchase this kit and you will see a huge difference by installing all of these parts rather than just the parts that you would get in some of the more affordable kits. Lastly, the float is purchased separately as well as this uh, throttle linkage here. So if either of these need to be replaced on your carburetor, you definitely want to purchase those separately from your carb kit. Both of my new bushings are in. I pressed them until they were just flush. Now I'm going to drill through with a reamer here to make sure that the uh, new throttle linkage will seat in there properly. I'm ready to insert my new throttle linkage and I'll slide it through both sides. You want to make sure that it fits properly. There shouldn't be any improper play there and it moves properly. Next, we'll put the felt on this end and a soft plug on the other side. The throttle linkage here is directional. See this flat side? That would go towards the U in the assembly and then this side back here is smooth or rounded towards the back. And then you can um, slide this around so that your hole lines up and then put your screw through and comes through on this side there and tighten this up. If you're working on a different model carburetor, this might look a little bit different for yours. That might be all one piece. So if it looks different, that's okay. And you can tighten that up and you'll be all set to put that in the carburetor. I'm ready to put my new throttle door in. You can see that I have my shaft in there the right way because I can see the flat spots. I'll turn it towards the side so this will drop in and you can slide that in there. Then once you have it about halfway, turn your door back. I'm using a self-starting screwdriver here to line up those holes. It looks like my door has to go in just a little bit more. There we go. And then just use your self-starting screwdriver to drop that down in there and start the screws with the washer behind. Your new choke shaft will come as a complete assembly like this in your kit, which you can just slide right in, in this direction. And then you can put your new choke door in. It'll slide in the same way that your throttle did. And this, tighten up with two screws there. And then on this side, you do have this kind of concave washer, which you can see kind of uh, conforms here. And we got a spring with a washer on the other end and you can tighten that down with a 3 8 inch wrench. Now we're ready to put our plugs back into the carburetor. Before doing so, make sure that your carburetor is really clean. I like to use carb cleaner that has a nozzle on the end so that you can really spray it into your passages and let it dry. You can do that twice. Cleanliness is the key to success here in your carburetor rebuild, so don't um, go too quickly at cleaning. Make sure that you're very thoroughly cleaning your carburetor. 
you can put your economizer back in and then we have all these little plugs to go in around the carburetor so just go around the carburetor and put all your plugs in you can tell you know what size the hole is to what size the plug is and uh, screw them in I have my bowl completely clean and it's ready to go back in. Uh, I have a brand new float. A float does not come in your carburetor kit. It's purchased separately. I definitely would recommend putting a new float in. If you go to all this work, go ahead and put the, uh, a new float in. Modern day gas is really hard on these floats. Next, you'll put the pin through the side. You can see that there's that little hole down at the bottom that's got to slide through. And then your bearings can go on both edges of the bowl here. Once I have that tightened up, it's important to check for any sort of play with your float. You don't want your float to touch either side of your bowl. If it touches, it won't work well. So I'm going to tighten both of these up and then we'll check that. Get this tight. It's hard to work a screwdriver backwards. There we go. Okay. Now you can see here that my float does not touch on either side. There's some play there, which might come out if we tighten that up. So I'll take a look at that and make sure that's secure before I wrap everything up. Next, we'll put our needle in, which drops down like this. It does have to drop through that groove. In fact, I have the old float here. Let me show you how that looks. Your needle has to go in the float like that inside the hole. You can't put your needle in until you get that in there. My fingers are going to cover that. I got it there. And then lastly, we have your seat, which has the little gasket on the end, which you can tighten up. It's important to make sure that your float is set properly. You will want to measure your float at the farthest away from the needle and seat. So down at this end, you'll use a ruler uh, and measure. My model should be half an inch. It might be different on your carburetor if you're not working on a 34. So consult the manual or the instruction sheet to make sure that you're at half an inch or three eighths. So you can measure that. Mine's exact where it needs to be. If yours is not, you can use your thumb or your finger to gently pull it up a little bit. Or if it needs to go farther down, you can use a screwdriver inside here and uh, push right here and push down on it. But make sure that your adjustment is made before you proceed. It's absolutely critical. If not, your tractor will leak gas. So make sure you're at the half an inch. This step's really important. Don't skip it. There's a bolt with a washer that has to go on before you put the bowl onto the carburetor. And uh, you know, don't forget that because you'll be sad. Here you can put your gasket on and then your bowl. Next, you'll use this spring. Notice that's directional and the wider part comes up towards the top. Again, there's a gasket here and then your uh, nut can go on the end to secure that and tighten that up. Once that's tight, you can put your drain plug in. I have a new gasket to put on here. Make sure that it's lined up and then you can put this new screen on. Lots of times these screens get really nasty, so it's a good thing, good idea to replace those and it does come in your complete carburetor kit when you purchase it. You can screw that all the way down. This is 9 size on the top of here on my carburetor. I'll tighten that up and then we'll be ready to put our idle and main needles in. Notice that I have both of the needles here, one slightly shorter than the other. This shorter one goes in your idle and if you forget what side that is, it does say it on the side of the carburetor. So this is the idle. I'm going to screw it all the way down to the bottom and then I'll come back out one and a half turns. That's just a really good uh, place to start. So that's all the way down. This will be one turn and that'll be half. And I'll do the same adjustment for the main needle here. The threads on these are pretty long. You've got a lot of ways. So that's all the way down. That's one turn back out. And this will be half a turn back out. We have new gaskets for both sides of the carburetor. Make sure that you've adequately cleaned up the remains of the old gasket, both on the carburetor and on the tractor. Then you can put your new gaskets on and put your carburetor back on the tractor.
my carburetor is on the tractor. You can see that my cutter keys are out of the way and don't interfere with the choke or the throttle. I have this tightened up. My gas line is tightened up and it's not twisted there. Just want to make sure that the throttle works, which you can see moves back and forth. And then let's make sure our choke works right here. That does. So now we're ready to start the tractor. I'm going to make sure it revs up nicely. It does. When you start up your tractor, you want to make sure that it revs up nicely, that there's good reaction in your carburetor. There's no hesitation when you give your tractor the gas. If you put your carburetor on the tractor and you see that there's a little bit of flutter in the idle, you could make an adjustment and close that down or make it wider. You could turn it from a turn and a half to two if there's some flutter in your idle. If you uh, feel like your main jet is off, maybe you are blowing a ton of black smoke out, then you could close your main needle in a little bit make those adjustments also just watch for make sure that there's no fuel leakage here or any leakage out of the bottom of your bowl or on the sides here and if so then you'd want to tighten those screws or that nut up at the bottom so do those fine tune adjustments to your carburetor so that your tractor runs nice when you are ready to rebuild your carburetor you can purchase the parts from us at farmtractorrepair.com then your tractor will run as nice as this one does go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more videos in the future